Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time to move on to episode number four from Better Call Saul. I'm looking forward to seeing just exactly what's going to happen with Nacho and the situation with Gus and the Salamancas. Of course, we know what's going to happen with Hector and he's had this stroke and he's essentially going to end up in a wheelchair where he can't speak. We know that's going to happen. So, but what's what's going to happen with Nacho? We We didn't know Nacho from Breaking Bad. So we don't really know what his future story is going to bring. I think there was only one mention of Nacho in Breaking Bad, which I didn't even remember. Somebody else had mentioned in one of the previous recordings that I did, probably in the first season, that Nacho had been mentioned in Gus's, not Gus, in Saul's first Breaking Bad episode where Walt and Jesse come to kidnap him and he says something like it was Nacho's idea or Nacho did it or whatever. So other than that, I don't think we heard anything about Nacho during Breaking Bad. So that's a story I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to play out. Now, right there at the end of the episode, we saw Jimmy get the letter from Chuck or the letter that Chuck had left for him. And it sounded to me like an old letter because it mentioned him working in the mailroom and he was proud of him and what he had made of himself and he was no longer worried about his future. So it sounds to me like an old letter, but that letter caused Kim to really get upset and to start crying and go off into the bedroom. And of course, Jimmy followed behind her, and that's where the episode left off. So I'm curious to see why Kim is so upset at this letter versus Jimmy, who just seems to kind of take it in stride and not necessarily brush it off, but he, he sees it, oh, that was a nice letter, and maybe he sees it the way I saw it. It was an old letter, and it, it was before some of that animosity from Chuck really came to the surface. And, of course, we saw Jimmy and his friend, I don't remember, his, Ira, Ira uh, broke into that copier place and stole that figurine. Are we going to see more adventures of Jimmy and Ira in the future? So it's a few things here I'm looking forward to, seeing how they're going to play out, seeing how they're going to work out, and seeing how the writers are going to intertwine some more of Breaking Bad because we also saw Gale come up in, in the previous episode. Are we going to see more of Gale? Are we going to see the beginnings of what Gus is creating before Walt shows up? Because Walt comes in and we know that that, that, that super lab was already constructed and and Walt comes in, and there's Gale. And so I think we're going to be seeing some of the beginnings of that. We're going to see the construction or, or the, the way that, that Gus is going to start structuring things that we know of from Breaking Bad. So it's fun to see all of these different Breaking Bad references come up, like the unsliced pizza or the, the man that ordered the pizza and then said sliced pizza, of course, referencing back to the, the pizza that Walt threw up on the roof, which was unsliced and had to be unsliced in order for that scene to be able to be shot and captured the way they wanted it to be done. Because if it was sliced, it would never have flown up on that roof that way. So they had to have an explanation as to why it was sliced, or unsliced, I should say. So a lot of things going on, a lot of, a lot of fun things that take place during these episodes that just kind of make you chuckle to yourself. And I, hopefully we're going to see some more of that. And hopefully I'll recognize some of it. A lot of these things may go right over my head. And if I miss some of them, please point them out to me. Because uh, I think they're fun to see. Now, if you'd like to watch my full-length reaction to this, or the other episodes or movies that I've been reacting to, and will react to, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31mike. And I'll leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and jump into the episode and see where we're going with Jimmy and the gang today. Somebody's building something. And that looks like an old car. Is that Jimmy? And this is supposed to be his father? Because that car back there looks like it's from the 70s. Carver's initials. 
Maddie. Oh. Okay, Maddie. That was yeah, Mike's son. He wanted me to talk. I talked. <laughs> so he's getting into the therapy thing. Well, I guess he unloaded a lot because the way he said that sounds like, well, okay, there it all is. Is that crazy, eight? That's crazy. Eight. I can't. I haven't got a real good look at him, but I don't think that was crazy. Eight. Crazy eight wouldn't be with Victor. James McGill. James, hi. It's Robbie Finn from CC Mobile. Good news. If you're still interested, we'd like to offer you a position at our uptown branch. Oh, one of his job applications is coming through. I don't think he wants. Get your training done today if that works for you. Yeah, he doesn't want the job. I'm not going to be able to take that job. Hmm, yeah, he doesn't want a job. Uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking all along. He's going out on these job interviews probably because he has to, not because he wants to. Quite the opposite. He doesn't want to. I was thinking that maybe you should talk to someone. She wants uh, him yeah. to go to counseling. Yeah. It works for a lot of people. <sighs> I got a job. <laughs> yeah, but he turned that job down. Turkey's newest mobile communications specialist. I'm a shift supervisor, even be very impressed. CC Mobile. I start today. To me, that is great. Yeah, it's strictly gainful employment. And then 10 months from now, poof, I'm a lawyer again. So two months have gone by since the bar hearing. I guess he's got to make a phone call now if he's really going to take that job. Because he already turned it down. Yep, he's making that call. Fine, we'll reconvene in 30 days for a proper pre-trial conference, shall we? Okay, next. That's, uh, I don't remember his name, the actor. He played Neelix on Star Trek Voyager. Do you have a matter before the court today? No, Your Honor, just observing. All right. Hmm. Uh, counsel? Good morning, Your Honor. Crystal Eitzman on behalf of the state. I'm doing the community service. The Judge Wilson, you would like to see you in chambers at the next recess. In the first place. Hmm. The state was prepared to charge this. Does he want her to take his, this guy's case that's representing himself? In. Oh, I don't want to bother you while you're eating. Shit. Help me take my mind off this eggplant and okra. Eggplant. Never liked eggplant. Cyst, you know, cholesterol, yada yada. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't eat eggplant. Are you researching something? No, Your Honor. Just observing. <clears throat> Don't think that you are the first to try to rediscover their love of the law by trolling my court. You're not. <laughs> Best thing you can do is stick to Mesa Verde. Make lots of money. Give some to charity. <laughs> And having said that, we've got perpetual PD overload. So beware. Next time I see you lurking in my court, I'm going to put you to work. <laughs> well, she might like that. <laughs> now, why, why would a judge have a problem with a lawyer just sitting in and observing? She's got to yeah. be there if they're sticking with him. Uh, good afternoon. Please be seated. Yeah, before we get started, I'll... Uh... I'll address defense's motion to disqualify opposing counsel. Yeah, she's got to be in there. 
Yep. <laughs> well, I read your brief very hmm. carefully, but I'm not. Oh, I thought that might be Lydia coming in. You talk to him? Don't need to. Then how do you know? Because that dead wife he's always talking about never existed. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's an act. The guy's story changes every time he tells it. No, I don't think so. The romantic night at the Cubs game, their first kiss. Yeah. Never happened. You can't know that. Wrigley Field didn't get lost. None of his details add up. Why would anyone make up a story like that? Okay. You have a very suspicious nature. <laughs> if Mike is coming up with it, I think I believe Mike. Watch him. He's got to tell. Like a bad poker player, when he's lying, he rubs his wrist. Hmm. <laughs> okay. You want to put your money where your mouth is? <laughs> Are you going to come to group tonight? Make it interesting. <laughs> right. They're going to start betting on Ten the bucks says that people in the group. Judy. Different story. All right. You're on. All right. All he has to do is start asking about, about some of the old stories and see if the answers are consistent. <laughs> No customers. Oh, you got a phone call. CC Mobile, this is Jimmy. Hey, oh, how's the first morning? Good, <laughs> Robbie. Dead. Um, but yeah, actually, it's a little, little slow. Yeah, that store's always been a bit calmer. Just bring a book. So this is a normal weekday? Any chance that you can move me to a store with a little more traffic? <laughs> uh, let's see. The Gold Street store is always hopping. Uh, but it looks like the schedule's all full right now. Well, let's give it a couple weeks, and then we'll see. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the Great Escape. Sí, ese es el recuerdo de las ventanas polarizadas. He's p picking out people that didn't do it. <laughs> no, no, ain't coming back tonight. They're going after it right now. Now, this is the place, isn't it? Where is it? That they started off? And we saw Victor? Are they setting up this hit? And they told Nacho to go point them out? Or is it the same place? No. <laughs> yeah, he didn't intend for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> They're just going right in, guns a blazing. <laughs> yeah, the two of them just going and storming in there. That sounds like automatic fire. Oh. And here comes reinforcements. Is he going to go out there and take care of those reinforcements? Oh, yeah, that's right. He's been shot, and he has to be careful. Yeah, because they're sitting out there waiting for them to come back out, and they're just going to gun them down when they come back out. At least that's their plan, it looks like. Yep, so much for him. <laughs> Got a war zone going on here. Of course, you get all this gunfire and explosions. You can expect the cops to be there. Or you would expect the cops to be there pretty soon. Of 
course, he comes in here and kind of saves the day or helps him save the day. This could go good for him with the Salamancas. Oh, came up from behind him there. Hmm. Well, he showed some value there. He nodded at him. You see that little nod? I think that's the first sign of approval we've ever seen out of the cousins. Hmm. Well, he got rid of that crew. Is that Gus? Yeah, well, of course it's Gus. <laughs> Can't mistake that silhouette. We cleared out the Espinosas. <laughs> They're all done. And the Salamanca brothers? Marco took a hit, but... He'll pull through. They went back yeah, south that was their plan that, that we saw at the beginning where they were there. It's territory, isn't it? Hmm. Salamancas wipe out the Espinosas. Espinosa territory isn't for grabs. The cartel can't give it to the Salamancas, so... Hmm, Gus gets it. I think they gave it to you. Get some rest. Hmm. You he didn't deny it. it. Maybe he needs to see that doctor that Gus has. And not a veterinarian. Anyone else? Hmm. This guy that just came in, he's going to want to say, oh no, she is. Stacy. Today I, I got up and I took a shower. I made French toast for breakfast. I don't know why I noticed it just then, but I hadn't thought about Maddie all morning. No. It's got to be hard on Mike to sit and listen to this. That it, it's his favorite. Yeah, you there can see it's, it's hitting Mike hard. Look at him. I mean, what if I lose the sound of his voice? What yeah. if I forget him completely? Yeah, look at look at Mike's face. I mean, it's I hitting him hard. It's impossible, but thank you, Stacy. You're not alone. Truly, I mean, it might be painful, but if if you ask me, I'd say it's progress. I mean. A lot of us in this room have felt the same things you're talking about. I know I have. I knew he was going to speak up. Oh, and Mike, he's hes not going to have any of that because he's already upset. You know, and he thinks this guy's a fraud. In the here and now, she always wanted to go to Sydney. But it was tight. <laughs> yeah, he's, Mike's about to break here. You can see that look on his face. Yep, here he goes. <laughs> Mike, you have something you want to add? You don't want to hear what I have to say. Hmm. Well, I do. We're ready if you are. Yeah. Huh? This guy was never married. <laughs> He's been coming in here for months, selling you a bill of goods, getting you all misty-eyed and loving every minute of it. She wanted to go to Australia? Well, last month it was Cuba. Hmm. Come on, Henry. Let's look at the paper, see if the math works. <laughs> Is he going to admit it? No, he's getting up out of there. And they're going to be mad at Mike for that. Well, he came to the right place, didn't he? All wrapped up in your sad little stories, feeding off each other's misery. He wanted me to talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I talked. That that was from the beginning. Okay. That explains that. So he got the for us in my casa. Tienes que irte ahorita mismo. Oh, Nacho. Okay. No. He's gonna call it. No, uh, you don't want to do that. Well, you dial 911 and then you don't answer. 
they're liable to come out to the house. In fact, they're likely to come out to the house in, in real life. Herman's room. He wants to see you. Oh. Yeah. Tonight. Oh, Mike looks a little bit annoyed. Yep, he's annoyed. What does Gus want to see Mike about? Hold on. We're not done yet. <laughs> So is he just going to get up out of there and leave? Or are they closed for the day? Oh! Ira. Ira? Ira. There you go. Oh, got his money. <laughs> How much did they get for it? Hey, whoa, whoa, this is, uh, more than we talked about. Yeah, Bavarian boy made quite a splash at the Collectibles <laughs> Expo. Bidding war. Wow. wow. Oh, great. Yeah, we I just said that, wow. Kept most of this. I would have never known the difference. Yeah. We're gonna do this again. I'll find something. Sounds good. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that could be very true when you're in that line of work. So how much did they get for it? Are they going to tell us? You got to turn off the fear while you're down here alone about things that can go wrong. You got to keep loading cold in. You got to pray that you do. <laughs> and what does it say? Oh, <laughs> the man is listening. He got that from Ira. He got that idea from Ira. Mm. Got the whole crew waiting for him. If we didn't know better, we would think this would be bad for Mike. <laughs> of course it could be, but we know it's not going to be life or death bad for Mike. You want to see me? Here I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You gonna make a move? You better make it. <laughs> oh, we know that's not gonna happen. But they're not gonna hire that. <laughs> brought me here because you haven't asked. Yeah. Yeah, he wants something. You stop running a game on me and just tell me about the job. <laughs> He's not intimidated by anybody, is he? <laughs> Yeah, Mike's not intimidated by Gus or, or having all of his little henchmen around him, henchmen around him. Uh, he's going to take it right to him and say, hey, you're going to do something, you better do it. <laughs> so I'm curious now, what is it that Gus wants from Mike? I mean, we know where his relationship with Mike leads, but what is it that we're doing right now at this particular moment? Now, I'm also curious, like I said there a few minutes ago, I'm curious to know how much money they got for that little figurine I guess they're not going to tell us. It's not, it's not paramount to the plot of the series, but I'm curious. It was a lot more than what Jimmy was expecting. How much did that bidding war go up to? And might some of those other little figurines that they had in that copy store be worth a little bit of something? But like I say, we probably won't revisit that. They'll move on to something else. Now with Kim sitting in that courtroom and then that judge, Neelix, I don't know what his name was here in the series, What's her purpose there? And when he tried to run her off, he, you know, she wasn't having anything of it. She wasn't having any part of that. She right back where he told her not to be. So I guess he's going to start putting her to work because that's what he said. If I see you in my courtroom again, lurking in my courtroom again, I'm going to put you to work as a public defender. Maybe that's her goal. She wants to do public defender work. And Jimmy, <laughs> there at the end there, he put painted on those windows, the man is listening, I think it said. Privacy sold here. That's an interesting tactic to try to get people to come in and buy a cell phone, which he got that idea from Ira because Ira had just said he switches phones. New job, new phone, because you never know who's listening. <laughs> so I guess Jimmy's looking at a different market for the cell phones that he can, can target 
<laughs> That's funny. Well, we see the direction that Jimmy goes in. And in some ways, Chuck wasn't necessarily wrong because Jimmy tends to go in that direction. The direction that leads him toward Walt and Jesse and the way we know that he goes. So we got some fun stuff going on. And I'm looking forward to seeing how these things are going to play out. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you have any thoughts or observations about this episode, something I missed, something I got wrong, please leave some comments down below. Especially if there was a reference to Breaking Bad, like the sliced pizza thing. If I missed it, please leave a comment down below and let me know because I find those instances to be fun and amusing. And if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload each new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on episode number five.